Hello, this is Michael McCarthy. In this video, we're going to take a look at using Ornatrix with 3ds Max 2018.2. This is the latest point release uh, or extension they released for 3ds Max, and it has a lot of really great new spline tools. I wanted to show how we can take advantage of some of those inside Ornatrix. You can see that I have this model here, this little hairstyle. This is actually a character that we use to show our uh, guide data, uh, hair LOD set up. And if you haven't seen that video, you should take a look. It sets up a level of detail as far as how far your character is from the camera, and that's really useful. In this setup, we're going to do something slightly different. So I'm going to select these uh, hairs at the bottom, and I'm just going to actually turn off uh, all these other modifiers right um, where hair from guides is, and just kind of work on our guides for the moment. Now, I'm going to just take this shift drag and make two copies of it. I'll take one of these copies and I'm going to just name it uh, blow back and the other one I will name side curl. So you may kind of notice that this is going to give us a setup that we might use for morphing. You do a lot of kind of copying things off uh, in order to do that. And I'm actually just going to remove any of these additional modifiers that are turned off on the morph targets that I don't need. We're going to use the new spline morph tool that came with this extension too. Now the great thing about this is we don't actually have to convert these to splines. We can leave them live and we can edit them uh, because these are recognized inside 3ds Max as splines. So if I select this hair, I can go in and I can say, okay, let me just choose our spline morph. There it is there. What we're going to do is uh, change from progressive to blended, which gives us the ability to kind of add a, a few more targets and adjust the percentage on each one. And we'll pick some targets. So I'm going to pick uh, our blowback. And I'll check this. And I'm going to pick our side curl. OK. So I'll change both of these to zero for the moment. And now I can go into these and I can adjust them as I want. So I'm going to go into Edit Guides and just do a little bit of brushing. So let's see, we'll go in here and just kind of do a little bit of a wave or blow back to that hair. And let's go to our side curl. And just add a little bit of a curl to that side. Okay, so as you can see, it's pretty nice to be able to kind of keep these hair stacks intact. You could do some different things with them, and then we'll be able to morph them. So I'm going to go over here, and you can see in our spline morph, um, we're going to be able to just adjust this. So set this to 100, and you can see that we get that, and we can kind of scrub this up and down if we want to. So if I just click and drag, you can see that happening there, and of course the same with this, and they can be blended too. So I can go in here with that spline morph and say, you know what, maybe I want 50% of this and 50% of that. And we can kind of adjust those. So this is really useful for all sorts of different uh, actions. If you just had some simple animation you might want to do, maybe you would take this method. Uh, also, if you had some more complex dynamic information, uh, this is something you could do on top of that. And you could make little tweaks for things that weren't working out quite as well as you might like in the simulation. So this can all be animated. If I just go in, I can set this one down to zero and over 10 frames we'll go up to 100. And this one's 50 straight across, but I'll set it to zero there. So now they'll kind of uh, blend up and down. You can see that. And then maybe I'll set this to 100 and this one to zero there. So there you can see that uh, we get that curl out animation happening. So you can really tune this to exactly what it is that you would want to have. Now because we've converted these to a spline in essence, uh, what we do need to do is kind of convert them back so that we can use these as hair. So I'm going to go in and do that. It's pretty simple. Uh, with spline morph you actually do convert these hairs to splines in Mac. So we're going to just say, okay, we're going to use OX guides from shape, all in the same stack, and uh, you can adjust the number of points or whatever you have in there. 
and then we're going to go in and say OX brown strands. So now we can pick the surface and we're going to just kind of pick the same surface that these were generated on. We have a certain scalp that we kind of used here. So we'll go in here under meshes and we're going to pick scalp 2 say pick and then we can say uh, uncheck or unpress this detach roots which is actually going to ground it and now when we pass this up to hair we'll get hair so we can pop all these back on and we can just turn on show end results and as you can see we have that animation which is going to go through and uh, work through blowing the hair from side to side or what have you all right so that works pretty good now another thing i wanted to show is we could uh, do some uh, similar things with other tools. So let's hide this selection. And we probably don't need this scalp anymore, so I can go into uh, meshes and just hide that scalp that we had. And now that we have this kind of workflow, I can turn off show end result. We actually don't need to use Blind Morph if we don't want to. Uh, we can use one of the other cool tools. So if I was to go in here again uh, above frizz, I can go in and choose. All right, maybe I want to um, choose spline relax and I can relax this. So I'll have a couple of iterations and just kind of inch this up as far as the amount goes. And you can see by turning this on and off, we get, you know, that kind of relaxed feedback there. So uh, you can see that we can kind of crank that up if we really wanted to. So this might be a good way to kind of relax uh, certain portions or other things like that. And you could even do this maybe with a selection or a group or something of that nature, which is pretty neat. Now, uh, another interesting thing we could do is, you know, we're using these new spline tools, but if you didn't know it, of course, we can do this workflow with uh, any of the spline tools. So a lot of people like to actually use Edit Spline uh, with Ornatrix. Of course, there's all sorts of different great brushing tools and editing tools there, but some people like to go in and adjust, you know, things with Edit Spline. And this way you get kind of really tight control over uh, what you're doing. I'll just turn on an edge distance so that we uh, get, you know, you can just have this one hair you're adjusting, uh, or if you wanted to turn that edge distance off, you can kind of pick one hair and just, you know, poof out right along here if that's something that you wanted to do and again we have guides from shape ground strands and uh, that brings all of our hair back up with those edits so now we're using edit spline as well as spline relax and you can see that if we wanted to use maybe the new normalized spline let me just uh, get rid of both of these and I'm gonna add normalized spline and of course, Ornatrix has a similar modifier to this uh, using spline detail, which I'd probably recommend using because normalized spline is taking a little bit uh, longer to generate. But the idea is just to kind of show what other max tools you could use here. Um, so you can see that we've done it based on spline length. Uh, you could have it do on knot count. So in this case, 20 knots or even set it to five. And then when you go in and you add that edit spline, You can see now we have a lot less uh, points to deal with here. So uh, maybe it's a little bit easier for us to adjust those particular hairs or those segments or other things that we wanted to deal with in that edit spline modifier. So here we've used uh, some of the new spline tools like the morphing tool, uh, spline morph. Uh, we also used the spline relax, which is a handy tool. And finally, we used a normalized spline with just a regular uh, everyday edit spline and using guides from shape above that and regrounding your strands will allow you to keep all that in one pipeline and edit those on your hair. Now with that being said I have one more trick that I just kind of wanted to go over and I'm actually going to dump all of these uh, spline modifiers here and that's that if you don't have 2018 and you don't have these cool new spline morph tools well you're not out in the cold okay because actually we could do this with some of the tools that already existed so if you're in 2017 or haven't updated for your 2018 uh, point release then uh, you can kind of do this with Ornatrix modifiers in a very similar way and in, in some cases it might even be a little more powerful so to take a look at that let me just uh, turn off these mods here at the top again we're going to be dealing with just with our uh, strands and I'm going to go in and add another edit guides 
So I'm just going to choose uh, OX Edit Guides. And in this, I'm going to make maybe one of those changes. So I might go in for my brush and I might add one of those kind of little curls in there. Okay. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is just hop out and I'm going to rename this uh, EG Curl. And then I'm going to add another one. So let's add an Ornatrix Edit Guides. And for this one, I'll go into our brush and maybe do that blow back in the hair here. So maybe this is going to uh, blow back a little bit there. Listen, not the most detailed stuff, but we're just kind of showing the possibilities here. So I'm going to hop back up and rename this EG Blow Back. And one thing that you will notice is uh, these edit guides now have an apply amount option. So I can go into each one and I could say, well, you know, uh, I want to apply this amount like so. So there's a zero amount. Uh, here's somewhere in the middle at 50%. And you can scrub that up and down. Now this is endlessly handy just for editing. So you may do an over-exaggerated curl that you want to just tone back with edit guides, which is pretty handy. Uh, but this could also be animated. So if I set this down to zero and just turn on our auto key here, uh, I can go in and set this to 100. Okay. And uh, let me just go back here. And you can see there's our animated hair like so. So then I can go forward here and drop this down to zero and go in here. And I can uh, maybe set this down to zero. And set it to 100 a few frames after. Okay. So you can see you get that animation in here as well. Uh, so this is actually very similar to a spline morph. Uh, maybe you don't have to do some of those uh, conversions because you're actually going out to splines. These are all with Ornatrix edit guides. Um, so now when I just pop these modifiers back on, here's all my modifiers uh, and our ability to use those. And you can see that we get that animation right here on the viewport on the guides as well as the hair. So that's something that you can currently do uh, just using edit guides. Again, a very powerful feature even just for editing. A lot of times I will uh, overkill what I'm doing in edit guides and then tone it back because that gives me some flexibility to add some more later. Um, but if you did want to use these as an animation, uh, you could. Now the big drawbacks here is of course, you know, you have these multiple modifiers uh, that you're animating through. Now for some people, this might be a preferred method to work because it's very isolated and easy to identify exactly what's happening. But certainly with the new spline morph tools, having that one interface with all the morphs in there, that's really handy. And you can go in and you can update those morphs uh, as you wish. Hopefully you enjoyed this uh, little kind of run through tips and tricks on how to use the new spline tools that ship with uh, 3ds Max 2018 extension 2. Also how you could do similar things using other uh, spline tools that already existed in Max. Uh, so edit spline, uh, you know, uh, normalize and things of that nature if you just want to use base spline tools uh, in conjunction with Ornatrix. And furthermore, if you wanted to kind of do a morphing technique uh, without having to have this extension in 2017 or earlier, then you can just kind of use that blend tool with edit guides. I think it's a overlooked little feature and it's uh, super powerful. So hopefully this helps you in your uh, productions and your groomings. Uh, thank you very much.